Sebum does not actually play an important role in the health of your beard at all. All that talk of not stripping natural oils is completely misunderstood and blatantly misused. Now, I am probably guilty myself of that rhetoric and of that talk along the journey. It's just one of those things that you hear, it sounds logically true, so you just simply say it. Well, it is false. Now, I have an example, an experiment for you guys for someone that wants to take a leap of faith and give us their results. Go one week without taking a shower or taking care of your beard and let us know your experience. Now, I've used this example before, but it fits absolutely perfect. I don't care if your beard is short stubble, medium business, long beard, all the experiences are going to be the same. After that week, does your beard feel nourished? Does it feel protected and healthy? Or does it feel dry, scratchy, like a bird's nest? Also, if you have head hair, let us know the experience of sebum in your scalp. How did it nourish? How did it protect your head hair? I'm going to bet it is two very different experiences from up here to down here. Now, this is just one of those things people throw out there, sebum oil in a beard. But do they actually know how sebum oil works? Another thing is people talk about beard oils for the skin. But do they actually know why? What is causing that need? Also, the term sebum oil, is that the proper term to use? Or is this one of those emulsify situations that we've always been saying and it just factually is wrong? Well, in this video that I have been obsessed with, I've been working on for a very long time to make sure I had it right, I'm gonna break down all of those things and hopefully you guys will join me in nerding out on stuff that isn't super important, but for me is wildly interesting. If it does sound good to you guys, welcome. My name is Dan C. Bearded. I do have subscribers that call me the trusted teacher because of videos just like this. And if you think you do like these kind of videos, consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you know you're ready to buckle up and enjoy this show, get a drink ready, get some snacks ready, go ahead and hit a thumbs up for me. That does help this video out. Sebum is a greasy liquid substance that comes from an animal and it does not dissolve in water. We refer to it as sebum oil because it acts as an oil. That term is easily digestible and relatable and easy to understand for pretty much everyone. Even Yale Medicine refers to it as sebum and then in parentheses, oil. Now, the substance that's on our skin, that's under our beard, that's on our head hair is sebum. But I do believe it is perfectly fine to refer to it as sebum oil, and we do not need to correct that vocabulary there. For anybody that was worried or loves semantics, I think it is perfectly fine to say sebum oil. Sebaceous glands are attached to the hairs underneath the surface of the skin, and the sebum secretes out of the hairs onto the skin. Now, I think that is news for a lot of people. I think a lot of people just assume the sebum comes out of your pores and onto the skin. But think about it like this. The hair is a vehicle transporting the sebum onto its designation. Now, we do have these hairs in sebaceous glands all over our body, except for a couple random places like your palm and the bottom of your feet. Now, your head hair, this is not average, right? We know we have male pattern baldness and a lot of stuff, but think about before male pattern baldness and losing your hair. An average adult male has about 150,000 hairs and sebaceous glands on their scalp. Now, a beard can have upwards of 30,000 hairs in sebaceous glands, but on average across the world, it's about 15,000 facial hairs. So a good rule of thumb to think about is for every facial hair you have, there are 10 head hairs. Sebum works its way through the hair, through the pores, onto the surface of the skin in the base of the hairs. Then it works its way up the hair. Now, when we're talking about a beard, it's probably better off to say that it works its way down the hairs because we have the added boost of gravity. Also, think about on your head hair, your scalp, most of the hairs are pointing up when they begin. On your facial hair, all of your hairs are pointing out or down, especially when you're growing that beard out longer and it pulls it even more, that is completely going down towards the ground. Now think about it like this, with this example of what happens after the, the sebum leaves the surface of the skin. Let's say we were to take about a quarter size amount of oil and put it on a table. Then get a piece of paper and just place the corner of the paper onto that oil. What is gonna happen? 
of course, the paper is going to soak up all of that oil. The paper is porous and the oil wants to go to that next location. The same thing happens with your beard hairs and sebum oil. Your beard hairs are porous and that oil wants to work down the beard, wants to get away from where it was and go to where it is. It's super crazy when you think about both of those examples and how closely related they are. We do not produce enough sebum oil to cover and nourish the skin simply because there are not enough sebaceous glands per area of skin. We do not have enough hairs. What happens is that oil is leached away from the skin and down the hair. Now, what makes it even worse is our beard hairs are much thicker than the thin head hairs. Those thin head hairs soak up oil much easier and it takes much less to keep those hairs happy, whereas in your beard, they are thick, they are porous, and they want more and more and more, and it's dragging that oil away from the skin where we need it. Now, this is where the idea of using more oil on a long beard comes in play, right? We need to cover the skin. Your skin does not change based on having a longer beard. I've had people bring that up to me. If beard oils for the skin, your skin doesn't get bigger when you grow a beard out. Very true. But because of that oil leaching away from the skin, we need to cover the skin and you need to nourish all of your hair. So when you have a longer beard, we got to cover the skin. We got to cover even more surface area when it comes to the hairs. That's why for me, I use about a dropper's worth of oil, where some of you, if you have a half beard of this length, you are likely using a half dropper. I hope that makes sense. Please leave questions if you have any down in the comments. Final thoughts. You are never going to produce enough sebum oil on your beard, the skin underneath it, your facial hair to make any kind of difference. If you still do not believe me after all of that information, please accept my test and do not treat your beard for a week. Do not take a shower. We all know how that's going to end. And I know there's always naysayers. You have an uncle who's never used beard products in his life and he's got this big luscious beard. I can give you as many examples of that as guys that try quality beard products for the first time and they're like, man, I had no idea. Usually those guys that are like, hey, we never used beard products. I got a big beard. I never needed any beard products. I don't know why I went Southern there, but I never needed any beard products. They likely have not tried quality on the other side. If they have tried something, it's probably something off the store shelf that is not of quality, that does not actually mimic sebum that we need for the skin. So guys, I am super excited to read your thoughts on this. Is this something you had thought of before? Is this something that's just kind of entering your mind? Do you not agree? Is there something that you would like to pose as an argument? I would love to hear it. It is open in the comments below. Please get interactive down there. I do appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching this one. The science-y kind of biology side of it, but I love it. Dancy bearded, stay bearded, and stay positive.